We're now ready to start Chapter 8 and look at the structure of solids. Solids come in two categories, crystalline and amorphous. Amorphous solids may have a pattern of local order, but you see that this pattern of 0, x, x, 0 does not extend throughout the entire structure. Crystalline solids have long range order. The crystal lattice is the pattern of the ordered array, and the unit cell is the simplest portion that shows the pattern. For this crystal, that unit cell would be 0x, x, 0. Before I discuss different kinds of unit cells, first I need to talk about ownership of atoms. I'll be presenting unit cells that are based upon a cube. A cube can typically have one atom in the center, although others have more. But if we look at the volume defined by the cube and the volume defined by the atom, we see that the entire atom is within this cube. So it takes one cube to own that central atom. So if we have one center atom at full ownership or enclosure, then that represents one atom. A cube will have six different faces, the four sides, the top, and the bottom. If we have an atom embedded in the middle of the face, there will also be four atoms around the side and one atom on the bottom. However, if we look at the ownership of this atom, it's going to be shared between one cube and another. An atom on the face of a cube is halfway in one cube and halfway in the other. And it takes two complete cubes to own the atom. So if we think about how many atoms are completely enclosed within this cube, there are six atoms, but only one half of each atom is actually inside the cube. So this site known as face represents ownership of three atoms. The next site in a cube is called the edge. There are four edges around the top, four around the sides, and four around the bottom. An atom that is on an edge site is shared among four different cubes. If we were to look at this picture from this direction, we would see that the atom is one quarter inside each of the unit cells. This is because it takes four cubes to own an edge atom, so each one owns one quarter. So if we were to try and count what portion of atoms were actually inside the volume of the unit cell, there are 12 edge atoms, and each one of them has one quarter ownership. So there are three total atoms inside the unit cell. The last type of site in a cubic unit cell is a corner. A cube has eight corners. So if we consider an atom on the corner, how many unit cells share that corner? Well, there are four in the back and four in the front. So it takes eight cubes to own a corner atom. So therefore, each unit cell gets one eighth of that particular atom. So how can we determine how many atoms are actually inside the volume of this unit cell? There are eight corner atoms, and each one has one eighth of their atom inside that unit cell for a total of one atom. So now that you know something about the sites within unit cells, let's talk about some well-known unit cells and their repeat patterns. The three types in our textbook are simple cubic, where the lattice sites are on the corners, body center cubic, where the lattice sites are corners and center, and face center cubic, where the lattice sites are the corners and the faces. We'll start with a simple cubic cell, also known as primitive. As mentioned previously, the lattice sites are on the corners, so let me draw the atoms. One in back, another, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight. The packing efficiency of this type of unit cell is 52%. That means only 52% of the volume of this unit cell is occupied by atoms. The remaining portion is empty space. So this is typically a very light material that is not very dense. One of the elements that has this type of unit cell is polonium. I need to introduce a term called coordination number. This is the number of atoms in the near vicinity of an atom. The coordination number for a simple cubic cell is 6. Where do we get that number from? Let's focus on the fuchsia atom right here. Let me number the atoms that the fuchsia atom is in the near vicinity of. There's one to the left, one below, and one behind. But that doesn't represent all of our coordination number. We're only looking at one unit cell. We need to think about the entire crystal structure. If there is an atom to the left, there will be one to the right. If there is an atom below, there will be one above, and if there is an atom behind, there will also be an atom in front. Let me show you. Here is where we get atoms 4, 5, and 6 for a complete coordination number of 6. So any atom within a simple cubic unit cell has a coordination number of 6. The number of atoms that are in this unit cell is 1. There are eight corner atoms. Each one is one-eighth inside the volume of that unit cell for a total of one atom. Our next unit cell is called bodied center cubic. This has lattice sites in the corners and the center. So there is my back layer, the one in the center, and my front layer. The packing efficiency of this type of unit cell is more dense. 68% of the volume within the unit cell is occupied by atoms. So this is more dense than the simple cubic cell, and atoms like iron, chromium, and niobium pack this way. The coordination number is 8. I think it's easy to see that this orange atom in the center would have in the vicinity eight atoms. But it's also true for this quarter atom, which is fuchsia. Once again, we need to think about the unit cell in its entire crystal lattice. As we are looking at it now, the fuchsia atom is in contact with one orange atom, which is to the left, below, and behind. But that means there's also the centers of other unit cells that are to the left above and behind, to the right above and behind, and to the right below and behind. So that would be atoms two, three, and four. And of course, if there's a layer of four atoms behind, there is also a layer of four atoms in front. These would be atoms 5, 6, 7, and 8 to give a coordination number of 8. In terms of how many atoms are in this unit cell, there are eight corner atoms, which are each one-eighth inside the unit cell, and one central atom at full ownership, so there are two atoms per unit cell. Our last cubic unit cell structure is called face center cubic. The lattice sites are going to be the corners and the faces. So there are the corners in back, the corners in front, the face behind, in front, and around the sides. As you might imagine, the packing efficiency is now 74%. So this is our most dense cubic cell. Elements that pack like this are gold, copper, and stainless steel. Stainless steel is iron in which a little bit of carbon has been added. Stainless steel is much more resistant to rusting than simple iron, 
and that's because it has this more dense face center cubic structure. The coordination number is 12. Where does that come from? Focusing on the fuchsia atom, you can see that there is a layer of faces that are in contact. One, two, three, and four. Within the same plane, the corners are also in contact. This gives us five, six, seven, and eight. Now, if there is a diamond behind, then in the whole crystal lattice, there should also be a diamond in front. This gives us 12 atoms in contact with our fuchsia atom. The number of atoms in this unit cell is four. There are eight corner atoms, one eighth of which are inside the unit cell, and six base atoms, one half of which are inside the unit cell for a total of four atoms. This next slide is just to remind you to think about the entire crystal structure and the fact that corner atoms are shared between unit cells. So here are two simple cubic cells together. Here are two body-centered cubic unit cells. You notice that we have a corner layer, and then a center layer, then a corner layer, and then a center layer, then a corner layer. It's a pattern. And finally, here are two face-centered cubic cells. Notice how the corners are shared, and the face is shared between the unit cells next to one another. So in summary, our cubic unit cells that we are covering are simple cubic, body-centered cubic, and face-centered cubic. If some of this was difficult for you to visualize, I highly recommend you go to this animation, which I will post in Moodle. This is from our friends at UNC Pembroke, and it helps students understand the sharing of atoms between different unit cells. It also goes into some unit cells beyond the scope of our textbook, so stop at about nine minutes. Here are some questions for the student body. Which structure is body center cubic? In which structure do the atoms have a coordination number of six? And which structure is the most densely packed with four atoms per unit cell?